Hi, welcome to Leap Taken. This is Nika, your Leap Taken. I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. So today I'd like to talk about Mbok. It's this um, Sunday, February 1st, and it's also known as Bridget's Day. If you know who Bridget is, she's a, a goddess um, who is typically associated with poetry, childbirth, um, healing, divination, and fertility, and maybe some other stuff, intuitiveness, that sort of stuff. Um, in the past, this holiday is typically, it was celebrated in Scotland. I have ties to Scotland because um, I did my ancestry DNA, and I guess who happens to have a little bit of that in your blood? So dibs on this day. I, I kid, I kid. I, don't, <laughs> I kid. It doesn't work that way necessarily, but low-key I think it does. Anyway, um, if you're not Wiccan, because typically this holiday falls under uh, a Wic Wicca, Wiccan holiday, if you're not, um, you know, and you still would like to somehow celebrate, I think that's perfectly fine. I don't see why not. It's one of the, the great things that I love about my spirituality and the way I practice is because honestly, I'm fit my practice for my lifestyle and what I believe. Now, and of course, at times I'm challenged because I am dealing with other realms, other entities outside of, you know, the mundane world. So I'm challenged and, and I'm forced to grow my spirituality more. And then just within myself, my own intuition, of course, is driving me to push a little bit more, to explore a little bit more. But ultimately, I'm, I'm kind of calling the shots here on how I practice, whether I do or I don't, whether I give an offering, whether I don't give an offering, or who I decide to give reverence to, um, or if I chose to worship a god or goddess, you know, that, that's all on me. Now, once I've entered into that relationship and that agreement, well, that's different, but ultimately making that, that decision, that leap, um, is on, is on me. Um, now, for me, on how I'll be celebrating, I'll just do something like cleaning to me, uh, which is purifying. And as I clean, I'll like, you know, purifying incense, like a lavender incense. Um, I might sage uh, as well, but I'll probably just stick with the incense because it's strong and I'll have my family home on Sunday. So um, do sweep the porch that I have. I'll sweep out there just to sort of get outside and, you know, on, you know, um, as I'm outside, I'll be thinking about how it's close to spring and what that means. Um, you know, because spring is basically, you know, it's a beautiful time. I was born in March, uh, March 30th. That's my birthday. So I'm a spring baby. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think to me, that's a very positive time. I just feel like almost anything's possible. I feel like that in the spring and in the fall. And I know there's a reason for that, but I, to me, it's just a time of everything's on the table everything's no matter what your situation is everything's on the table most of my big changes that i've had in my life happened during the spring it happened during the spring i moved here in the springtime um prior big moves were in the spring for some reason i noticed that um and they were mostly positive experiences um you know relationships like when things got to a certain point it was in the spring anyway <laughs> yeah that it's, yeah i i feel that's i have a connection to that time so in walk is also like i said it, it's kind of giving a nod so to speak to spring is coming and um yeah i'll, I'll have that energy of ooh, preparing you know what seeds am i going to plant you know what creative endeavors am i going to work on so I'll look at the holiday that way. Now, about Bridget, because it's also known as Bridget's Day. So for me, I won't be in invoking her. Um, I won't be doing a ritual of any sorts where I'm including her because honestly, I don't have a connection with her. I, ne I, I don't, no, I don't have a connection with her. Um, I don't feel pulled at this time to connect with her and um, you know, I don't want to force a relationship just because of the day, Bridget's day. And I think that's what I'm supposed to do, you know, as quote unquote pagan. I'm supposed to give her some sort of reverence. 
I can if I choose to. There's room for that, but I don't have to. Especially if I don't feel a connection, because then that's not very authentic. Um, there's got to, you know, if my ancestors, my own intuitiveness is not aligning with that, then I won't move, and I, and I won't, I'm not going to move forward in that direction. So just word to the wise, if you feel compelled <laughs> to follow a certain deity because of the holiday or because, you know, something like that, don't, if you, if there's really nothing in you that is drawn to that. But you like the concept of the holiday. You like the um, all the other stuff that's around it, the energy around that day, that celebration. Uh, like me, take that opportunity, step outside, take in some nature, uh, do a deep cleaning in your house, sage, light incense, light a candle uh, with the scent that you consider purifying or healing. Um, do some meditation that day, even if it's, if it's for five minutes, whatever, you know. That, if that's how you want to sort of nod and give you know some reverence to the day and you want to include that in your practice you know simple things like that is fine um i don't see anything wrong with that but i did want to touch on this topic and i'm going to explore this on a, a larger conversation but working with more than one deity i know people who do i know actually i know quite a few people who do that i did at one point i was working with three different goddesses at one point nothing wrong with it it gets crowded <laughs> it gets crowded because the more of a connection you're going to want to set up an altar no matter what that altar space that altar space could be a tea light candle and you know a mirror or a picture or something i don't know you know a statue that could be enough so you got that over here you got the other one over there and this one over here um not all deities mesh you know um especially from different, um, what do you call it, pantheons. So like if I was working with Bridget and then I wanted Oshun and then I wanted, um, help me out guys, I can't think of you. Know, so I'm trying to, I was thinking of a god. I was trying to think of a god, but just insert one from some other pantheon, you know, and you know, that might get a little hectic, that energy. And you have these altars in your home. What I thinking I'd like to do going forward. And I talked about this before. I haven't gotten to it yet. I'd like to set up an altar outside of my back area. It's pretty private back there. So something small. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and do that oh, oh, um, with some water, things like that. There's a specific goddess I have in mind for that. But I'd like to set that up out there. That way I can go out, um, have moments of prayer, meditation, whatever with that specific goddess. I already have an altar here for ancestors uh, because that's you know important to me. I have an altar to Oshun, and um, that's where I'm at right now. You know what I actually have, and then what I want, what I plan on having. Um, I like the idea of more, I guess, rooms, a goddess for a room, like a kitchen goddess uh, to bring in, or a kitchen spirit. Um, you know, I think like that for some reason, but outside of that, I don't, I feel like that energy gets, it's competing energies. Also, now I got to give offerings. I, I almost look at it like a polyamorous relationship. So now, you know, I need to be these things, you know, be this, this, uh, bring offerings and give energy, you know, so in return, we have this reciprocal relationship with these different deities and, you know, that might be too much. That might be too much. Which the larger topic, which I'll, I'll get into, but just to kind of make you think a little bit, let's say this is happening. Let's say you're kind of, you're working with different deities. And it's, it's okay, but it, it gets a little exhausting, energetically speaking, and keeping up with the offerings. And you, offerings don't have to be extravagant, just be water. You know, you guys know that, right? Or lighting a candle. Um, and now you maybe don't feel the same connection um, you felt. You'd like to bring in a different goddess or god that you'd want to work with. So how do you break up with a god? <laughs> how do you break up with a goddess and not be, you know, not have them, you know, come back for you, do something to you? 
or undo all that they helped you help, you know, you petition them for or whatever. Is that possible? That's something to think about. I, I have some thoughts on that, and I'm going to share that in a video very soon. But how do you break up with a, a goddess, you know, safely? <laughs> think about that. But as we talk about this holiday and other holidays to come, and, you know, there's a goddess or god associated with it, think about that. You know, if you're not... Um, usually working with them or let's say you do start working with them you know you you're curious and you wanted to follow out your curiosity but you know the next holiday rolls around and you kind of you think you got enough out of that relationship what happens how do you just stop do you disassemble your altar and just say okay we're done anyway food for thought right <laughs> anyway but thank you for watching i just wanted to do something quick about this um for us non-wiccan folk who like to celebrate quote unquote Wiccan holidays. <laughs> Thank you for watching again, I'm Mika. This is Leap Taken. Please like the video if you've enjoyed and uh, subscribe also if you haven't already. And if you have subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, bye. Oh, happy Sunday, happy Unbalk.